Welcome to this presentation of our study, Are You Joking? Using Reflection on Humor to Trigger Deliberative Mindsets. At PME 41, Wim van Doren presented a very interesting study. Six graders should solve problematic word items, so-called P items, like these. Let's zoom in a bit. Calvin is a very good swimmer. His best time to swim 25 meters is 20 seconds. How long would it take him to swim 500 meters? And they expected the following. A non-realistic answer would be 20 times 20 seconds, so 400 seconds, whereas a realistic answer would be probably more than 400 seconds because he can't keep up the pace. The sixth graders were distributed into two groups, one with a humor condition and one with a word problem condition. In the humor condition, between each of the P items, the students were shown jokes like this. The teacher gives a simple sum. If there are five birds on the roof and you shoot two, how many are left? None miss, the others have flown away. And the second group got S items, normal word problem items. Like this one, they travel 1,500 kilometers. The car uses 5.6 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. How much diesel did their car consume? The intriguing result was that the humor group significantly outperformed the other group in solving the P items. And they explained this like this, the incongruity relief mechanism is specifically relevant for our study as it focuses on the perception of the same situation from two different seemingly incongruent perspectives. So we wanted to further explore this intriguing results. Instead of humor, more generally, we draw on the mindset theory by Golwitzer. We use mathematical critical thinking instead of P items, and we work with pre-service teachers instead of sixth graders. So the overview, this is a very typical study with some background methodology results and then invitation for discussion. Mindsets. We all know that solving word problems is influenced by traits, for example, intelligence, but also by states. And, and Golwitzer uh, uses a theory to talk about such states. He defines mindsets as mental procedures and cognitive orientations that influence the ways in which people act intellectually. He distinguishes between two mindsets, deliberative and implemental. And here you can see how he defines those. In a deliberative mindset, people activate cognitive procedures. They are undecided in which direction their decisions will finally take them and generally they are open-minded. An implemental mindset requires a more focused and selective orientation to process information and you could generally say that people are more closed-minded in such a mindset. In his studies, Golwitzer prompted his participants to be in a deliberative mindset by asking them to think about unresolved personal problems or in an implemental mindset by trying to implement goals. And in his studies, he showed that participants in a deliberative mindset showed more planning and reflecting on reasons than participants in an implemental mindset. Weinhuber used comic strips showing a math club debating alternative approaches to a problem to prompt a deliberative mindset and another comic showing a math prep course in which the teacher shows consecutive steps of solving a problem to prompt an implemental mindset. And in her study, participants in a deliberative mindset generated more principle-oriented and less procedure-oriented explanations than participants in an implemental mindset when they were asked to explain how to solve an extreme problem. Using Golwitzer's theory of mindsets, we can now interpret Van Doren's study. Jokes are funny when there is an unexpected twist or 
uh, an incongruency, as they say. Therefore, the humor condition triggers a deliberative mindset. And the S items are solved using routine procedures. Therefore, they trigger an implemental mindset. In our study, instead of P items, we use critical thinking. We define this by the use of a dual process theories like Kahneman or Stanowich did. In this theory, the persons th think critically when they engage in hypothetical thinking or when autonomous or algorithmic processes are checked and, if necessary, overridden. To measure mathematical critical thinking, we use items similar to Shane Frederick's cognitive reflection test. To give examples of the three minds in the model of Stanowich, you can think of the following. If you drive a car and you hit the brake, you do this automatically without thinking about where to put your leg. You just hit the brakes. This is using the autonomous mind. If you were to calculate a task like 123 times 456, this would be using the algorithmic mind. And if in this calculation you spotted an error, this would be using the reflective mind. James Frederick, in his CRT, uses the famous bat and ball task. A bat and a ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? So almost everyone has an intuitive answer and says, oh, the ball costs 10 cents. And most people are satisfied with this answer and say, okay, okay give me the next task. But actually, this result is wrong. The ball costs only 5 cents. So when the bet costs $1 more, it costs 105, and in total they cost 110. And you only see this when you use your reflective mind. And this is where critical thinking is located in this model. Here you can see some examples. To highlight one from Frederick's CRT, you have water lilies that double the surface they cover each week. After 12 weeks, the whole lake is overgrown. After how many weeks was half of the lake covered? And a lot of participants assume linearity and answer with six weeks, whereas 11 weeks is the correct answer. And only if one checks for this false intuition of six weeks and answers 11 weeks, they will get points in our critical thinking test. Another example is this item. For a 56 centimeter high mural, you need six milliliters of paint. How many milliliters of paint is needed for a 168 centimeter high mural? Most participants see this connection of 56 and 168, yet this is a factor of three. And then they reason that you need three times as much paint as for the smaller mural. Of course, this is not correct as you have an area that grows by three times three. So you need a factor of nine for the correct response. Again, you need to critically check your result to solve this item. The test is rated dichotomously one point for each correctly solved item and zero points for each item that is not solved correctly. Against this background, you want to further explore the mindsets and whether humor triggers a deliberative mindset. We hypothesize that humor is an implicit trigger for a deliberative mindset. And we want to compare this with an explicit trigger for deliberative mindset using awareness prompts and with the implemental mindset using routine procedures just like Van Doren did. If you think of the water lilies item, awareness prompts like be careful or think critically should increase solution rates and we want to see whether humor 
does the same. So does triggering a deliberative mindset by humor situations also increase critical thinking scores compared to an implemental mindset? To test this three group design, we developed booklets with 10 MCT items spread over three pages and on top of each page, there was an environment trigger. In group one, we had these routine tasks that the participants should solve. In group two, the awareness group, there were prompts like think critically. And in the humor group, similar to Van Doren's study, there were jokes. The test was administered in three lectures at the University of Cologne. In students in their first, second and fifth bachelor semester. In total, 401 students attended. And the test booklets were randomly distributed to these students. Participating was voluntary and took less than 20 minutes. Okay, here are some results. You can see the three groups here. On average, the students solved only three items, which is a bit less than we observed in other studies. And we also see a um, semester effect. Students of higher semesters are more successful, which is consistent with earlier uses of this test. To look at these three groups, we see that the awareness group was most successful. The, this group performed better than the humor group, which in turn performed better than the routine group. A one-way analysis of variance shows that the differences between the two deliberative mindset groups are non-significant, but uh, both are significantly different from the implemental mindset group. So just by giving additional information in the form of routine tasks, awareness prompts or jokes on the top of each page, we influenced the critical thinking of our participants. Presenting jokes seems to have a similar effect to raising awareness via prompts. And we interpret these results that both trigger a deliberative mindset compared to the implemental mindset of routine tasks that might remind our participants of working on math tasks at school. To sum this up, we want to introduce Golwitzer's mindset theory to the PME community. And we think that our results really strengthen our interpretation of Van Doren's humor environment in the light of this theory. Also, we want to raise awareness for considering states in performance testing. We saw that participants in a deliberative mindset were significantly more successful than participants in an implemental mindset. However, there are some limitations to the study. Compared to Van Doren's results, our effect was rather small. In this study, we just presented the jokes on the top of the pages, which is only a very soft trigger for mindset. In future studies, we plan to have our participants reflect on the jokes like Van Doren did to really ensure that all of them are prompted into the right mindset. We look forward to discuss this study with you at the PME online meeting.